All right. So our next session um, is going to be very exciting. It's called Guaranteeing Fun Factor with Game Audio. We have the team from Strategic Music here. Um, the speaker is Dmitry Kuzmenko. He graduated from the University of Humanities and Social Science uh, in St. Petersburg, Russia, with a degree in sound direction. He founded Strategic Music in 2003 and has been working on music and sound design for games since then. Strategic Music has over 350 projects in its portfolio. So please welcome Dmitry and team. Thank you. Uh, so before I start, I want to continue Aaron a little bit and talk about our studio for just a couple of minutes. So uh, as Aaron said, we were uh, founded at 2003, and so this May in 2013, we celebrated the 10th anniversary, anniversary of our studio. And who we are? Uh, where is it? We are a team of 14 audio specialists, among of them uh, composers, sound designers, voiceover guys, and uh, we actually atmospheric more than 500 different titles for any platforms of, of, of any genres. And uh, so this is a couple of photos of our team. Uh, okay. Uh, our most uh, recent project was recording music for a very huge game, MMO game, uh, by Gaijin Entertainment. The, na uh, the game's name is War Thunder. It's a huge, uh, like, war simulator game. It's main competitor to World of Tanks by Wargaming.net, maybe many of you know uh, about this game. Uh, and uh, so we recorded more than two hours of orchestral music, uh, and we uh, there were three orchestra sessions, and there were more than 100 men standing uh, on one stage, musicians, choir, and uh, the guys in the studio who were recording. So uh, this is it. And now we are going to get closer to the team, to, the, to our theme, uh, guaranteeing fun factor with the game audio. Uh, personally, I think, and uh, many of you may agree with me, that the most thing uh, to entertain people is the sound and uh, I'm gonna show uh, you some of the examples of how we uh, like how we make game cool by by sound but actually I have some time limitations that uh, and because of that I'll be talking about voiceovers this time so how to make a game cool by voiceovers how we do it uh, I'm going to show you some um, example. I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of games we worked on recently. The first game is uh, Bloody Harry. Uh, Bloody Harry is a game, is a classic uh, uh, slasher. So the story is that uh, a chef, uh, the name's Bloody Harry, he f recently found himself surrounded with a crowd of monsters. Uh, the monsters are actually uh, vegetable zombies and so he has to get his way through all these mobs and uh, let me just show you the gameplay process just a massacre without voiceovers and uh, uh, so uh, when we started to think what we were going to do uh, with this game uh, we uh, of course we um, like 
First, we thought about the voiceovers. The chef, uh, Bloody Harry, he must speak something because uh, you know we can. We, what we can do with it? So we uh, took down every in-game situation we could be. Uh, he could be in, like uh, the chef is being kicked, or the chef is uh, kicking someone. The chef has been shot. The chef is shooting someone, and for each situation we uh, wrote many, many, many variations of his reactions. So uh, and uh, with this variety we. The game delivers something more than just like uh, you know many games we are we can play we see only one voiceover reaction for one event uh, like uh, you you just kill a mob or something like that or uh, good good job or excellent job and this repeats over and over again and everything gets boring so uh, we create a variety of the phrases uh, and uh, that's how the script. Uh, uh, looks that what the script looks like. Uh, for you, you see many columns with uh, many phrases, and uh, I'm not going to speak much about this because I'm going to show you the process of recording the sounds for uh, Bloody Harry. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Is it? Let's just see it. So uh, what did we do here? We created a huge variety of phrases for each in-game situations, and more importantly, we uh, tried to write the phrases with lots of humor. And uh, more, uh, we uh, browsed the internet for many famous quotes and even for last words of famous people. Because when the chef is dying, so he's got to say something, something real cool, like. Uh, what a uh, you know very famous uh, last word of uh, Nero the Emperor of Rome was what an artist dies in me so we tweaked this phrase a little bit and it become uh, what a chef dies in me and uh, uh, what else let me see let me find it yeah so uh, we created tons of phrases for each in-game situation and uh, what we uh, Got because of this. Uh, every like every player uh, got used to hear in these kind of games that you know uh, voiceover reactions would be the same. So we see a tough guy, he acts like a tough guy, and 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 we. It, and it gets a little bit boring and we try to avoid it we try to make something really like different because you know when he hits someone he's a tough guy when he's been hit by someone he's not that tough he asks for mercy if he's begging and uh, i think that it's that this uh, surprises people uh, they they don't expect to hear something like that 
So uh, let me just show a quick example of uh, a condensed gameplay and uh, we will go further. No, no, no. Yeah, demo two. How it works and the actual gameplay process. And uh, what else? A, a, a voiceover reaction can be uh, heard in different situations in a game, and it can deliver a different emotion, a uh, different game experience to a player. And uh, also, as I, as I told before, that we uh, use many catchphrases, many phrases from other products, from movies, from like books, from everywhere. Uh, it connects some culture things to your game, to the game you're working on with your developer, and uh, it uh, like uh, increase, increases the, um, um, the gaming experience uh, for a player. So that's, uh, it, this is very important uh, in, in a game like this to create more and more and more phrases. Because it, and it shouldn't be phrases, it could be just exclamations, but this way, uh, we'll, uh, we will deliver to a player something special, not just hearing one phrase over and over again. Uh, okay, so the next game I want to talk about with you is uh, World of Tanks. It's a quite different game from uh, this mobile uh, Bloody Harry because it's a huge uh, simulator of a battle tank and uh, we, we've got two uh, drive this tank and we have uh, a crew of uh, four to five people and uh, I, I'm, I'm very I'm, I'm the biggest fan of uh, like war simulator and uh, I know that I always hear something very samey like you you're you destroy the enemy you've been spotted by the enemy you destroyed the enemy you've been spotted by the enemy and it gets me it, it gets very boring and this uh, and this game we try to avoid it again so firstly we took down uh, every situation in a game we created a huge spreadsheet with uh, more than 50 columns each column is uh, a separate uh, in-game situation like you've been spotted by the enemy you spotted the enemy you've been shot you've been uh, like uh, you've got the radar sighting of the enemy or something like that and uh, uh, we met we uh, like we we had to answer one very important question because lots of people uh, there is an opinion that lots of people like uh, a very true reality in, in uh, these kind of games like if it's game if the if it's a game about tanks so you, you don't have to uh, to make a fun of something you, you just do your job just warn me uh, with uh, same phrases and and this is it but when we did this thing uh, we can answer this question that reality is always uh, not that important for people like coolness so we just have to make a game fun even uh, if it's such a serious game like world of tanks and uh, so that's why we uh, when we were working on the voiceovers, we followed our like approach. Uh, in we just had in our mind that we have to make the game cool, not to make the, this game real. But anyway, we invited uh, like a consultant uh, to a guy who like who is fond of military history, who knows uh, what what is uh, like I don't know. Uh, many terms, technical things, and uh, so he double-checked our script, but anyway, we filtered 
his uh, recommendations because uh, you can make again fun with uh, pure like pure reality. So let me just show you the recording process of uh, World of Tanks voiceovers. Let's battle! I can already smell our enemies burning. Listen how that engine purrs. It smells like the engine ain't happy. Driver, take care of the engine. Driver, do you copy? Crap! Driver, we'll get you to the hospital, but later. Gunner! Gunner? Gunner, it's just a scratch. Get back to your duties. Our communications are a mess. The radio man must be in trouble. Radio man, we'll take you to the hospital, but not now. You've just hit an ally. Put your glasses on. The engine is crawling again. To your stations, enemy found. Gunner, keep your eyes on the target. Great shot. Get out of my field. So instead okay. of... Track is gone. Do we need to get out and push? So instead of just listening like reports, we uh, try to do something more. If our radio man is is wounded, uh, uh, typically we can see, we can hear in these kind of games like the radio man is wounded, the radio man is injured. Uh, but what if we can say something like, radio man, get back to your duties. It's just a scratch. So. The commander already knows that the radio man is injured, but why to repeat it again? It's it's obvious, and this way, so we try to do it using our approach. Um, what what else do I have? This is the script. The script is quite huge, uh, 15 columns. 30 to 50 phrases in each columns, and even more, and it gives us a very huge variety of uh, like we always hear something very different and uh, every situation can be heard in different in game in a different in game event and uh, it can be like percepted differently by a player and this gives lots of fun lots of cool uh, lots of coolness to a player and we of course we try to use uh, all sense of humor we've got while creating the script and uh, in according to uh, reviews on uh, the forum, uh, so we were on the right way because people tired of uh, reality. They have to be amused. They have uh, they have to be uh, like they they have to hear something cool instead of just they uh, anyway they see on the news every day. Um, this is it. Uh, now let's see uh, how it works in the real gameplay process. Let's do some damage. Enemy down. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Firestorm and brimstone. Will somebody pierce that off? Going, going, gone. All right, we can move. We're so good. Our radio man's had an ear injury. Driver, prepare your track quickly. We're just too good. Give him hell next time. Okay, and uh, more, even more, we uh, recorded a female voice. It's quite an unusual thing because, you know, very few women served in the army as a tank commander in Russia, and I hardly know any, anyone who served in the, the United States Army uh, during the World War II. And uh, this was a very interesting thing because many players, uh, like, uh, they noticed it and they liked it because Actually, it's not a member of the tank crew, it's uh, an ability. In the game there is an ability which name is the Sixth Sense, and when you got this ability you, ha you can uh, notice where, I would say, when you've been spotted by the enemy, you know about that and you can like do some movement to avoid the enemy's fire b before you, you get shot. And, uh, 
So I, th I thought the, the way, if I were a tank commander, so it's just a, it's just a voice in the commander's head. So what voice would be in my head? I, I think it would be a female voice <laughs> first. So uh, this is how it looks. Let me show you the gameplay, gameplay process with this female voice. So, uh, as I told before, many, 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 many variations uh, and coolness instead of realism, which were appreciated, which was appreciated by the player. Great. Uh, and uh, I've got more to talk about. It's kick the body. I won't show you the gameplay process because I did it, I think, twice in Seattle, Casual Connect. Uh, uh, so it's a game about uh, body and you have to the, the only way of playing this game is to kick this body so it's just a stress relief but why I've brought it in the game's size the, I mean the physical size of the game's build is about three uh, 330 megabytes and uh, the game don't have any publisher and you can find this game uh, in the United States uh, top App Store top uh, paid applications and in the United States uh, top uh, grassing applications on the App Store uh, and uh, uh, the audio is 90 is over the 90 percent of the game so audio weighs uh, more than 300 megabytes it's very important thing to uh, argue with the developer because uh, when we like communicating with the developers, with the developer, we uh, it's very often to hear that, hey guys, uh, we appreciate your ideas, but uh, you know it's too heavy. People won't download these heavy builds, and uh, the game is going to be too big. And uh, but it's just not true. So the main thing is to make the game cool, and people will download it. And uh, every time you hear this opinion from uh, a developer you are communicating with. You just have to remember this little story about Kick the Body and about its success uh, on the App Store, uh, having this huge uh, size uh, like of audio content. We worked on Kick the Body since maybe 2010, and during these three years we created lots of sounds. and. Uh, I said again, it's very, it's a very successful game. So, uh, in conclusion, I would like to tell that uh, if we are talking about voiceovers, so uh, if we are talking about sounds and uh, music, uh, it's obviously that uh, all has uh, to be created by the sound or the music guys. But when we uh, approach to voiceover job, so uh, uh, it's like. Often you've been given a script by a developer, a, a, a script which is uh, ready, and uh, you have uh, we uh, we have to remember that the written script is not the same thing as a spoken script. And the guys who who wrote script, they hardly uh, had an experience of working with voiceover talents. And for instance, if I see the script, I can imagine in my head how it should, like how it how it be. Uh, sounded uh, by uh, how it be voiced by uh, voice talent, and uh, this way we you have to be involved in the script creation process because uh, other way, uh, other, otherwise you we can do something real cool and we can surprise our players, and so I just encourage always uh, uh, my colleagues uh, always 
try to be involved uh, in the script creation process. Then, um, so you have to just don't be lazy, just create many, 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 many phrases, but it's, it, it can be hard because the shorter the phrase, the hard, uh, it, you know, like, it's very hard to come up with shorter phrases because uh, just lack of variations, but you can do it. And uh, I often use Wikipedia, I often use some, some, some like movies, books, scripts, uh, uh, to uh, find some some phrases, some maybe it, it, it could be an outdated phrase, but it uh, if you find this phrase, if you record it, and if you uh, manage to put it into the game, it would just surprise players, and it will guarantee some fun factor in the game. So uh, I think this is it. If you have any questions, I'm here. Thanks much.